Now this may come as a surprise to some of our younger viewers out there, but there was a time when operating systems and graphical user interfaces, you know, like mouse pointers, didn't exactly go together, leaving computer enthusiasts with only plain text and uh, cat posters to stare at in their mom's basements. The long winter ended, however, in 1985, when Microsoft delivered Windows 1.0, shining in graphically generated light for the first time. Oh, okay, so they, they actually weren't the first to do that at all, but we've got to give them credit where it's due. And while the first several Windows versions still basically ran over top of MS-DOS, relying heavily on command line entries, they also introduced many things we take for granted today, such as differing executable file formats, device drivers, and multitasking. That's right, for the first time, people could play Minesweeper and Solitaire simultaneously. The next big developments came with the smash hit release of Windows 95, arguably the most prolific OS to date, with sales reaching 40 million copies that year, many of which are still running on elderly people's computers worldwide. Windows 95 was the first OS capable of running 32-bit applications. It introduced plug-and-play hardware, commonly called plug-and-pray at the time, and preemptive multitasking, an OS's ability to pause and resume program operations. Users were also treated to a groundbreaking new way of launching programs and, ironically, powering down the computer, the Start menu. From then until Microsoft stopped supporting Windows 95 and launched Windows XP in the year 2001, we had witnessed much advancement. Multi-monitor and universal serial bus or USB support with Windows 98, the first non-server OS based on the NT kernel in Windows 2000, and that very unhelpful but friendly little paperclip. But XP is the next proper stop on our tour because of this milestone. It was the first consumer-oriented Windows OS to break free from DOS's stranglehold in favor of an NT kernel. Although many remnants of the heady DOS days remained and in fact still exist, like the command prompt or the tilde menus used to enter God mode. Anyway, this combined with its robust features like a restyled double wide start menu, uh, searching by document types, not just name, easier networking and file sharing, and even autoplay, all eventually led to 400 million copies being distributed with extended support continued up until last year. This success did not come without a price though, literally, and Microsoft shocked many by announcing that while Internet Explorer and Space Cadet Pinball were bundled for free, Office would no longer be included and would have to be purchased separately at a steep premium, a trend that continues today. Eventually, demand for a 64-bit operating system capable of breaking through the 4-gigabyte system memory limit imposed by 32-bit processors and OSs led to the release of Vista in 2007, whose reception was less than lukewarm, with DirectX 10 ending up not being relevant for quite some time, and controversy over things like the unavailability of hardware drivers and its very high system requirements for the time. Microsoft hurriedly released Windows 7 just two years later though, which, while sharing much of the same code base, ended up looking and performing better than its predecessor. Thanks to Windows 7's critical acclaim, it got a longer shelf life, but the same can't be said of Windows 8 and its free incremental 0.1 improvement. They did deliver better performance monitoring, faster boot up and sleep and wake times, improved networking performance, and the Microsoft Store for apps, but they replaced the beloved start menu with the large, brightly colored tiled start screen, meant to blend the experience between Windows desktop and Windows mobile devices. A halfway measure that ended up not pleasing anyone. But that doesn't mean they don't learn good old Microsoft, which brings us to the present day, Windows 10. While it may be too soon yet to determine what we'll remember about Windows 10 in 10 years, there are some solid additions like Cortana for voice control, the new and improved start menu, and a new way of handling upgrades with Microsoft offering Windows 7 and 8 owners a free Windows 10 license within the first year, as long as they're willing to wade through the appropriate menu options to preserve their privacy. If you're interested in more specific information about Windows 10 features and performance, make sure to check out our video about it here. Otherwise, 
I guess there's lynda.com. With a lynda.com membership, you can watch and learn from top experts online who are passionate about teaching. You can download courses and create playlists and share them with your friends who are also Lynda subscribers, and you can watch them on your mobile device while you commute. I mean, imagine if you turned all that time you sit on the bus into learning time. Pretty freaking awesome. You can browse course transcripts to follow along, or you can search for an answer and skip to that point in the video. And what's great about it is there's all kinds of different things you can learn, whether you want to pick up Photoshop or uh, Adobe Premiere for video editing, or you want to work on your photography skills or your website coding or your business skills. Awesome stuff, and it starts at just $25 a month. So head over to lynda.com slash techwiki to get a free 10-day trial and see how much you like it. I guess that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Guys, if you liked the video, do this thing. If you disliked it, do the other thing. Check out our other channels. Channel Super Fun is full of all kinds of wacky, crazy stuff and Linus Tech Tips. Hopefully you're familiar with that channel. We do like, you know, technology reviews and vlogs and stuff like that. If you like this video, go ahead and get subscribed and all that good stuff. And as always, leave a comment under the video if you have suggestions for future Fastest Possibles, just like this one.